Hi, this is the French horn presentation by Katrina. So this is the typical range of a valved French horn. Um, on the left you can see with the B-flat trigger, uh, there are pedal notes you can play. So typically you'll see either a three-valved French horn or a four-valved French horn. The difference between these two is obviously the number of valves and also um, when the thumb valve, the fourth valve, is put down, it actually shortens the amount of tubing by three feet. Um, a three-valved horn can sometimes be called a single horn and um, a four-valved horn can be called a double horn, a B-flat horn, or a B-flat alto horn. The four-valved horn allows higher pitches to be produced easier, which is why a lot of uh, more experienced players will often have the four-valved horn. Um, uh, holding the thumb valve down actually allows the twelfth partial on um, the B-flat horn, the trigger, um, to be the equivalent to the 16th partial on the three-valve horn. Um, composers only write for F horn, and it's up to the player to choose whether they play with the F or the B-flat division of the horn. So... Some register characteristics of the French horn. The low register is hard to control, especially the low B-flat trigger pedal tones. Um, they speak slowly, so it's best to use them in slower sustained passages. Um, the high register it can be very difficult to play for long periods of time, so it's best to write rests in if you're going to have people play in the high register a lot. And then the rest of um, the middle range register can be played easily, but wide leaps can be difficult to hear for horn players because there are just so many partials and it can be hard to find with the embouchure as well. So I'll play some examples of some of those notes. I'll start with some low notes. <laughs> So you can tell it took me about three tries to finally get that note out, um, just because it's so low and it's so hard to find on the instrument. Uh, here's some of the middle range notes. <laughs> notes to play they're used pretty often on the French horn and then the high register so that tires out um, horn players lips pretty easy if they're up there for a long period of time Scoring for the French horn, sometimes, especially in older music, um, horn parts one and three would be what were called the high horns, and two and four would be called the low horns. Um, so basically, the horns one and three usually play the higher notes, and um, uh, two and four play the lower notes. Um, modern pieces sometimes have it so horns one and two are the high horns, and three and four are the low horns. Um, but you can see how they're often scored, uh, in the image below. Transpos transposition for the French horn. In modern, score, in, in modern scores, the French horn always transposes down a perfect fifth, but in some 19th century scores, the low French horns might transpose up a perfect fourth, um, and those parts would always be written in the bass clef. Horn range is shown above. 
Um, the basic natural horn was, um, it had a fundamental pitch of C. And most classical composers rare, rarely asked a natural horn player to play any partials above the 12th or the G above the treble clef staff. However, um, starting with Beethoven on, composers starting, started asking those natural horn players to play higher and higher. Um, the fundamental on the natural horn usually wasn't playable, and um, the notes shown with the X above were usually really out of tune. So if horn players needed to play those notes, they had to either adjust with their hand in the bell or adjust with their embouchure or both. Um, so you, actually there were only about 11 really nice sounding notes that natural horn players could play. So natural transposition um, the natural horn used what were called crooks, or basically their extensions that were added to like the tuning area or the um, lead pipe of the horn. Um, these were used to change the fundamental and harmon harmonic series for the horn. Um, each one came with a j different transposition, so the most common ones are in, on the list above. Scoring for natural horn. Natural horns were usually divided into two two parts. First horn was high, second horn was low. Um, eventually, the ranges of um, the first horn and the second horn became fairly established, and those are listed below. And lower horns also did start using larger mouthpieces to make it easier to hit the lower notes. Special effects um, on the French horn, um, you can do muted horn, um, it's the same as using a mute on any instrument, it just quiets the um, tone or the notes. Stopped horn, this is when a French horn player uses their hand and basically shoves it inside of the bell as far as they can. Um, it creates a soft, smooth, nasally sound, and um, it's always good to note that this can cause some serious intonation problems for um, more inexperienced horn players because you have to do a lot of manipulation with the um, embouchure. Uh, trills and tremolos can be played on the French horn. Um, you can do lip trills or uh, trills with the valves. Glissandos can be played on the French horn. Um, they sound really cool. Cuivre, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's basically when a direction to be told to play with a harsh, brassy sound. Um, basically, they're playing really loud and really kind of nasty. It makes it sound like metallic. Um, and then bells up. Uh, basically, this is when um, French horn players swing their right arm up to be level with their play, uh, their left arm, the keys, and the horn is uh, parallel to the ground. This that just produces a louder sound from the horn. So something that could be seen um, is the Wagner tuba. This is um, invented by Richard Wagner. It uses a horn mouthpiece and um, it, it kind of sounds like a mix between a horn and a trombone. Uh, Wagner just wanted to bridge the gap between some of the sounds. He had ideas in his head that weren't possible at the time, so he came up with something that could play those sounds. Um, it's said to have a noble tone, so I think, like, kings and queens and stuff. Um, it's used in Wagner operas, specifically his Ring Cycle opera. Um, and it's becoming more and more popular for horn players to play today, just because there's more literature being written for it now. Um, 
So this video shows kind of what the uh, Wagner tuba sound of that. Section. So we're not going to listen to it. So that's all I have for this presentation. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your day.